Good morning, Alex here. And today we're gonna to be looking at how to enable HTTPS when you're developing locally. More specifically, we're gonna be able to have HTTPS with subdomains. So I can even put test here and I'm getting local SSL in next with all the subdomains. So how can we do that? Let's jump right in. So in VS Code here, I'm just gonna create a new next app. And we'll go with local SSL demo. And let's open that project. And here you have it. So in this brand new project here, you have your simple dev command, which runs locally without HTTPS. I'll show you first the easy way to set up SSL in your local environment. And it's as simple as just putting a little flag here. So we're gonna do experimental HTTPS. And that's it. Oops. Let's run it and see what we get. And you can see Next is actually prompting you to create and install the certificates. So it handles all the heavy lifting for generating those certificates and then installing them. You just need your sudo password here. It's gonna prompt you natively as well. And then ultimately next is kicking off the server with HTTPS. I can follow this link, click in, and there you have it. So if this is all you came here for, well, that's just the flag you need. So leave a like and subscribe. But I'm going to go a little bit deeper because this doesn't work with subdomain. So the certificate that Next generates by default does not support subdomain. So we need to actually dive a little bit deeper into the docs and look at the other flags and provide our own uh, certificate authority, certificate keys, etc. So what I have here is the series of commands that we can use to generate all the different things we need. Um, but before I go further, I just wanted to point out that internally Next uses MakeCert, MKCert, and this has the cross-platform compatibility and it takes care of all the different commands. So this is definitely a tool you can use to do it. I'm just gonna show you kind of the manual way on Mac, how this can be achieved as well. All right, step one is to generate what's called a certificate authority. And in order to do that, there's two quick commands we can run. So I'll just grab the first here, go back to VS Code. And the first thing I'll do is I'll CD into certificates. Just to keep things a bit clean, you'll notice this is where Next.js actually put the keys that were generated as part of the regular flow. So that coincides with that. We can actually delete those two for now. And I'm going to paste the first command. You can specify your country code. So I've replaced with Canada and root CA is just the name of the authority. Once I hit that, you'll notice I have my root CA set up. And the second command is just taking the dot PEM and converting that to a dot CRT. So we can paste that in and there you have it. All right, what's next? Next step is we'll need to set up the domain configuration. This is where our certificates are going to differ from the default next is we're going to be applying additional mappings for the local kind of DNS. What I have here in the example is localhost app.localhost star.app.localhost with actually star.localhost as well. That might be something you want. I'll talk a little bit why I like to have app.localhost in a second. So now we can do that. This just creates the file. You can always modify it afterwards. And then if we go back to our steps, we're now at step three. And this is where we actually kind of generate the actual certificate. So the first command, I'll just grab, hop back to VS Code, and I'm gonna paste that here. Again, you'll notice you have control over the country, the state, the city as well, and then the name that you want it to have. So I can hit enter, creates the key. And then the last step is with the key, create the certificate. Boom. Now we have all these different files here under certificate. Only three are necessary to run and the others you probably don't want to commit into your code. So earlier when we ran Next.js, it put the certificate folder 
into the git ignore, but you can actually keep the, the three that are relevant for running next with the flags. Now, if I go to the package JSON, we're gonna replace our experimental HTTPS with the individual flags that specify the authority and certificates that we wanna use for running now. Here's what that looks like. So we have our experimental HTTPS, which is telling next we wanna run with SSL enable. Then we have our certificate authority, which in our case is certificates slash root CA dot certificate. We have the key for local host, and then we have ultimately the certificate for local host. If we were to run this as is, it wouldn't work because now next assumes that we have those certificate installed. We just created them. We didn't install them yet. So the manual way to install them is actually to open this in Finder and then uh, click on them so that they're added to your keychain. The three files are the three files we're specifying in the command, and you can just do that. It's gonna prompt you for your uh, machine password. And then once you've done all of that, we can actually come back here and run it and see what we get. It says it doesn't work, but sometimes you just need to restart your browser. So let me do just that. And there we have it. So we have HTTPS again with our own custom certificates. And the difference now is I can actually go to subdomains and it's working just fine. Now, why do I like to put app.localhost? Well, this is because once you're gonna be dealing with cookies, say for authentication or other user preferences, you're gonna run into some issues if you want those cookies to be shared across subdomains, so with some lax configuration. And the reason for that is Chrome has some special handling for localhost. And if you just have a subdomain under localhost, it confuses that with a domain plus extension. So this it would think it's like test dot the extension localhost. Whereas when you do app in front, you can actually think of it as app being the domain and localhost being the extension. And then subdomains underneath that are treated like regular subdomains for cookie purposes. So in order to enable that, I have some redirects in my next config that make sure that whenever you're running on localhost, you're actually one subdomain deeper than you have to be just for doing things like OAuth and, and the like. You're probably thinking this is a lot of steps. I'm not sure I wanna go through all of that. Well, you're in luck. The repo that you see is the repo that's down in the description. And if you go under the config folder, SSL, I have two scripts that help automate everything we've just looked at. So the setup script is a script you can run to initialize your repository, but also to create all the certificates the same way we've looked at in this video. It's a nice little CLI with a few prompts that let you put in your information, your custom domains that you need. And second is a trust script that we will run in order to ensure that they're installed and trusted before running our next dev command. So let's have a look at how that works. We can simply go slash config, SSL, and then we'll start with the setup script. Certificate authority name, I can just say root CA. We're in Canada, Ontario, Ottawa, and company could be whatever you wish. You'll see by default, it picks the domains you want. This is something we can change and add additional ones. I'm just gonna keep the default, continue, and there you have it. You can see it generated all the certificates just the same as when we walk through it manually. You'll also notice there's another prompt here, which is, would you like to update the package JSON to have two new commands? So a dev SSL script, I'm just gonna say yes, and we'll have a look at that. So what it did is in the package JSON, it modified, it took my dev command, and then it also created a dev SSL command. This applies all the flags and points to the right certificate files that were just created. So super useful, uh, kind of sets it all up for you. The second command that it creates is this pre dev SSL. And anytime you append pre in front of a command, your package manager is actually gonna run that before the other. And this is in this case calling the trust script, which is gonna prompt us to make sure all of those certificates are actually installed and trusted on the machine. So let's go and have a look at that. So I can just go pmpm dev SSL. And just like the default HTTPS flag in next, it's prompting me 
natively on my machine to install those certificates. The other thing you'll find in the repository here is my next subdomains config. And this is a file that helps you set up your next config with the configuration from last video. You'll also find in there the two redirects that take you from regular local host to app.localhost for the reasons we covered a little bit earlier. And there you have it. We now have our custom certificates. We have SSL running locally with subdomains. You can use that with secure cookies. You can use that to set up Stripe in tests locally. I personally always run my local environment with SSL enable, and this is the way I do it. I hope it helps you. And if it does, give a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you again soon.